jucăm fotbal, facem totul. We play football for the fans. Deci, cred că eu... The game is not just about tactics. Fotbal nu înseamnă tehnică. Football is about individual technique. Tehnică individuală a jucătorului. About vision. Viziune. About quick thinking. Înseamnă gândire rapidă. Pentru mine nu-i presiune, e responsabilitate. For me, it meant responsibility. Un jucător... I don't think that a great player feels pressure. On the contrary, he wants to take it on, knowing that what he does is important. It's all about embracing that responsibility and the pleasure of playing. My relationship with the national team was a marriage made in heaven. From start to finish, everything was fantastic. Performances constantly improved. It was just perfect. I was born just outside Constanta, and when I was eight years old, we moved to the city, and that's where I began playing football. I was spotted at school in the age 10. I began playing every day at sports club Farul. Yosef Bikoshi was my coach. He was someone who helped me a great deal. I made my debut with Farul and I played with them for a year in the National League. There were some big teams in Romania that wanted to sign him. And he was this great talent coming from Constanta. Era un talent mare. With Gheorghe Hadje's burgeoning reputation, top-flight side Sportul Studentesc persuaded him to leave his hometown and move 150 miles to play in the nation's capital, Bucharest. The first season was tough, but in the second and third seasons, I was Romania's top scorer and best player. I was picked for the senior national team, even though I was only 18 or 19 years old, and they educated me and looked after me. We were very united. The coach at the time, Lucescu, took me straight from the juniors to the senior team, without me even playing a game for the under-21s. I'd been named Romania's best player two years in a row at Sportul Student Desk. Like any other ambitious player, I needed a big club to help me develop further. Inevitably, Romania's biggest club, Stauer, were keen to keep him in Bucharest. Still, negotiations for the 21-year-old's transfer were complicated. At that time, Sportul Student Tesc was owned by Ceausescu's youngest son, Nicu, whereas Stauer was owned by Ceausescu's eldest son, Valentin. To be honest, as the Stauer coach at the time, I remember the situation very well. I remember that I really wanted Haji to stay with us at Stauer. So, I went to one of the Ceausescu family members and I told them that's what I wanted. Nicu Ceausescu told them that he was only allowed to go for one game, the Super Cup against Dinamo Kiev. We really wanted him to play for Stauer and he showed his ability straight away as he won us the Super Cup match against Dinamo. It was a typical situation where he scored from a free kick and really demonstrated how good a player he was. And then, once he'd seen how much he enjoyed it at Stauer, and he had sampled the experience of having won the Super Cup, he wanted to stay. He told Nicu Ceausescu that he would be disappointed not to go there permanently, as there was such a big team. It was a great pleasure for us to welcome Hadji at Stauer especially for his old teammates from the national team and the juniors who already knew him. He was a great player. 
and he scored a lot of goals in the championship. So really, Hadji fitted Stour like a glove. <laughs> During my three years with Stour, I played two European Cup semi-finals and a final. That final came in 1989 when they met AC Milan in Barcelona. However, a hectic schedule of matches in the build-up would prove their undoing, as the Italians romped to a 4-0 victory. At that time, all the players at Stour, or at least eight or nine of them, who were involved in the national team, had played lots of matches. So I don't believe we focused completely on the final, and that was a mistake. One month later, and with the league title already clinched, Stauer played fierce rivals Dinamo in the Romanian Cup final. As so often, Hadji's explosive left foot made the difference. After three years and three league titles with Stauer, Hadji's ability yet again demanded a bigger stage. And with a staggering return of 76 league goals in less than 100 games, some of Europe's biggest clubs had made attempts to lure him from his homeland. But the communist Romanian government steadfastly refused to sanction the departure of their country's golden boy. There were discussions, there were always discussions, especially after I had won the Super Cup with Stauer. Juventus came and had talks, and other clubs showed interest too. But at Stauer, we played because we loved the sport, and we were a great team. And whether anything were to happen or not, I was happy, and it was great to be there. Of course, in those times, up until the revolution, there was a strict regime which dictated whether you could leave the country or not. The revolution was in 1990, after which I went to the club that wanted me most. There were lots of clubs showing interest, but I preferred Madrid, because their president came to Bucharest, and I got to speak to him in person. That made it easy for me. It was an honour for me to have them come to meet me, and of course, it didn't take long to make my decision. After some early problems, Hadji settled in, firing 12 league goals from midfield, to take Real Madrid to within a point of the league title in 1992. I gained great experience during my time with Madrid. I learned exactly what it means to work hard and give your best every day to be a winner. His time in the Spanish capital was cut short when the club brought in their sixth coach in two years and Hadji moved on to Brescia in Italy's Serie A. On the international stage, since making his Romanian debut in 1984, Hadji had gone on to establish himself as his country's biggest star and chief source of inspiration. Hadji was an astonishing player because he was really hungry for success and he worked incredibly hard to get where he did. It was always clear that Haji would become a leader. During his time playing for Stauer, he was just a very talented player. But he always had the potential to become a huge star. It was a real advantage to have him on your team, and he would take on extra responsibility all the time. He accepted this pressure, as he was our generation's leader. The thing was that he knew how to overcome any doubts or fears, and that's what a top-class player does. I never felt the pressure. I used to go out onto the pitch, feeling grateful to our fans for their support wanting to play as well as I could and give them a show and not to feel the pressure. He could overcome adversity and still give his absolute best. That's what it means to be an important player. He always had that innate value. The thing I appreciate most about him is the fact that he never hid. For me, it was never about pressure. It was about responsibility. A certain calibre of player doesn't feel pressure. Quite the opposite. He's aware of his role, and it's important to the team. And you thrive on that responsibility, and you just enjoy playing football. 
pentru mine a fost și For pentru me and colegi, my teammates, it was always easier when Hadji was in the team. În echipă. Era un jucător He was the type of player that was never phased by any match or any opponent. În valoare. Installed as Romania captain following Italia 90, Hadji led his fast improving team to first place in qualification for the 1994 World Cup. Raja Hadji. At that time, a lot of the national team players were playing abroad for some very big clubs and had gained a lot of experience. We had also played together for a long time and we knew each other's style. The summer of 1994 saw the first World Cup to be held in the USA and with Hadji entering his peak years, Romanian optimism abounded. Their first game of the tournament saw them drawn to face Colombia, who were many people's outside tips to lift the trophy. We were very motivated when it came to playing this game, and even more so after we saw the Colombian team had qualified by beating Argentina with a score of 5-0. They had some incredible results. They were the favourites. But I don't think they took the match as seriously as they should. In their minds, they'd already won. We had some very high-quality players in addition to Hadji, such as Ili Dumitrescu and Radachoyu. Hadji played together with Radachoyu before at Brescia, and they knew each other very well. It took barely a quarter of an hour for Romania's captain to take control of the game, feeding Florin Radicioiu for the first goal. 19 minutes later, and Hadji himself left an indelible mark on the world's biggest stage. Even now, thinking back, it feels like a dream. Sometimes I even wonder if that goal was actually real. Before we scored the first two goals, Hadji had already tried a couple of shots from distance where he surprised Cordoba. That's just who I was. I always tried to score from different positions and this time it worked. I scored lots of great goals in lots of competitions. I've watched it so many times and I can honestly say that it was one of the true great moments on the football field. Victory was confirmed when Radicioyu made it 3-1 from another Hadji pass. A disappointing defeat to the Swiss in the second group game was only brightened by another Hadji thunderbolt before a 1-0 victory against the USA sealed their place in the last 16. Standing between them and a quarter-final appearance were Argentina. Twice world champions, they'd won their opening two matches of the tournament before controversial star man Diego Maradona had failed a drug test, leading to his expulsion from the competition. Level at 1-1 after 18 minutes, there appeared little danger when Hadji picked the ball up on the right touchline. That was a truly awesome moment. I took the ball from our side and then there was a quick one-two between Hadji and Lupescu before Hadji passed it through to me to score. The fact that we had played together at Stour for so long really made all the difference. Our relationship on the pitch was perfect. At the end of the day, he was a genius. When Hadji was in an environment where he felt comfortable, he would give everything he had. Thirteen minutes into the second half and Dimitrescu and Hadji combined again for the captain to score his third goal of the tournament. I had run for about 40 metres alongside my marker. Then I saw Hadji running through. I passed it forward. And he finished it. To beat Argentina, 
a strong side and previous world champions, who just four years before had played in the World Cup final. To win against them made us very happy and very proud. Romania had reached the last eight of the World Cup for the first time in their history. However, the dream ended after a penalty shootout against another surprise package, Sweden. It's a loss that still hurts. I'm sure he would have been named the best player at the World Cup in 1994 if we had got through to the semi-finals. At that tournament, Romania was one of the best teams. And it was a real shame we didn't win. After spending two seasons in Italy with Brescia, his starring role in the 94 World Cup had seen him reaffirm his status as one of the game's most gifted exponents. Immediately after the tournament in the USA, Hadji sealed a transfer to Spanish giants Barcelona, a move which also gave him the opportunity to work with his boyhood idol. My all-time favourite, without a shadow of doubt, was Johan Cruyff. As a player and as a coach. From the age of 10, when I first started watching football, I loved Holland. In 1974, Ajax and Holland both represented total football. And Cruyff was the playmaker. And obviously, I was in awe of him. Another two-year spell in Spain saw him again struggle to settle, showing only occasional glimpses of the talent that had lit up the World Cup so spectacularly. Johan Cruyff's departure as coach led to Hadji moving on again. This time he moved east to Istanbul, where he was welcomed with open arms. I knew Galatasaray had incredible support, and for players, that's always important. When he moved to Turkey, he went there with the mentality of a winner. The Galatasaray style suited him, because he was the type of player that would never give up. This was the club where I stayed the longest. Five important years in Turkey, where my team and I grew together until we managed to achieve European success. I've been to Turkey many times and I've noticed that Fenerbahce and Besiktas supporters respect him as much as Galatasaray fans do. Five years at Galatasaray saw him win four league titles and two Turkish Cups. Ultimately, though, it was to be his achievements leading the team in Europe that would guarantee his legacy at the club. He was unique in the way he thought and what he brought to the team. Even when he signed the contract, he did something completely amazing. I had a clause put in my contract when I signed with Galatasaray. If we won a European trophy, I would receive a bonus. So they allowed him to write down his own number. Nobody believed that this team would ever win a European trophy. He would prove to be master of his and his team's destiny as he guided Galatasaray to the final of the 2000 UEFA Cup, where they met English side Arsenal. A red card for Hadji before a penalty shootout win meant a bittersweet day, but ultimately he had helped deliver what he promised. Yes, you have to think that nothing is impossible. If you are organised and really want something enough, you can do it. Three months later, and Galatasaray faced Champions League winners Real Madrid in the UEFA Super Cup, where Mario Jardel's extra-time golden goal gave the Turkish side a 2-1 win. 
To beat Madrid, a powerful and talented team with such extraordinary players, was fantastic. That was the pinnacle for us. We'd reached a very high level of maturity and experience. And I also think it was important that Turkey as a country was proud of what Galatasaray had done. I believe that it's also the reason why the Turkish people loved him. Together with him, the Turks learned not only how to win, but also how to win outside of their own country. When Hadji arrived, Turkish football started to enjoy high-class performances. Having retired from the international game as his country's top goal scorer in 2000, a year later, the seven-time Romanian Footballer of the Year played his final club match. A coaching career followed before he moved back to the Black Sea and his hometown of Constanta, forming his own professional club in 2009. Vitorul Constanta have steadily climbed the leagues and attained top flight status in 2012, the first team supplemented by products of Hadji's own youth academy. I'm very aware that football shaped who I am. It gave me everything. And so, of course, I love the sport. And so, given my name and the level I reached, it was important to me that Romania has an academy that will play a part in children's lives so that they too will have a chance to fulfill their dreams. Haji has to be taken as a blessing. He came along when the people were going through a very difficult time during the communist period. He taught us that we can win. He taught us that we can be better than others. He made us see that sporting success is not dependent on facilities or conditions, but that it comes from the desire to win and from the love for this sport that we love, called football. The Romanian people really treasured him because of this. Besides this, they admired his technical ability and the exceptional footballer he was. Hadji is the only sportsman in Romania that our people wanted as president, and that is not a joke. This is what we wanted in Romania in 1994. We call him the king because there was no one better than him. Hadji was a blessing. Besides the fact that he truly amazed the world with his skills on the football pitch, personally, for me, to work with him was a joy. I'm not just talking about Hadji as a player, but about his qualities as a man. Even if we waited another 20, 30 or 40 years, we won't see another player like Hadji. You have Hadji at the very top and then drop about 100 levels and you can put whoever you want there. I played for the supporters. I loved doing things that the public would enjoy. And that's probably why people were so happy with me. In the national team, there were 18 perfect years. And at club level, I won trophies in Europe. So I don't have any regrets. The opposite, in fact. No. Besides the personal trophies, I enjoyed a fantastic career where I dedicated myself to my work. I think of myself as a very ambitious person. I still like to win now, and I believe that really made the difference.